Using background images with CSS can be tricky. So in this video, I'm going to show how to use a background image example with some of the most important background properties of CSS. So let's get started. Currently, we have here a container defined as a square. And inside this container, we are going to try the background properties. First of all, CSS has many different background properties. The first one is the background property itself, but I will come back to this later. For example, if we want to add here a background color, I need to use the background color property. And after that, I can choose here any color I want. Let's say I chose green. And when I save it, now our container has a green background. For background colors, you can also use hexadecimal numbers if you prefer. And if you are using the VS Code editor, then you can basically choose your colors from here easily by hovering with mouse and you can assign here whatever color you want. Now, what about adding an image? To add a background image, this time we need to define the background image property. Now, the background image property also has many different variables that we can use. But what important here is that, firstly, we need to locate where the image is. And to do that, we need to use the URL option. Now, we need to define here the location of our image that we want to use. Otherwise, the image won't be visible on the page. So the image that I want to use currently is under the images folder. And I need to specify the path of the image here. And to do that, first of all, between the brackets, I need to define single or double quotes. And inside the quotes, I'm going to use this symbol because the index HTML and the images folder are on the same level. Backslash. And after that, now I need to define the next path here, which is the images folder. So images. And once we are inside of it, then we need to define the name of our image, which is city, also the correct extension name, like this. And now when I save it, our image is there. But the original size of this image is very large, so we are not able to see it currently. So we need to work on this image a little bit to see it better. We can, for example, change the size of our background image. So I will define the background size property. And let's say I will give a 200 pixels of a width. And when I save it, now the image is there, but it's still not looking very good because by default, the image is repeating itself. If you don't want to be your images to be repeated, there is another background property called background repeat. Now, by default, it is repeating, uh, but you can choose the no repeat option if you don't want it to be repeated. And now, as you can see, the image is not repeating itself. If you are not happy with the position of the image, you can also change the position of your background images by using the background position property. Now, let's say that I want this image on the center. So I'm going to use the center option and the image is now located on the center. Or I can say, for example, I want to have it on the top right of this box. So the image will be positioned on the top right. Okay, now let's go back to the background size property because it has actually other options as well. If I don't specify a size and leave it empty, then as we saw before, it will fill out the complete box but we are not able to see the complete image here because by default, the background size property is using the auto value, which is the default value. And the background image will be displayed in its original size. Now, if you are not happy with this, you can add here a width like this, then the height will be automatically set. Or you can also add a height length. Then also we will have a 200 pixels of a height of our image, but it doesn't look very good. So there are also other options we can use for the background size property, which is, for example, contain. Now, if you use the contain value, then this time it will resize the image. So if you use the contain value, 
you will be able to see the image on its full size. But the problem is that we still have here this green part and maybe you don't want to have it. But maybe you want to use your background image on the full space of your container. So in this case, you shouldn't use the contain value. Instead, you can use the cover value. Now the cover value will resize the image again. But this time the purpose is to cover the entire space of this container but the image is not again fully shown. So in this case, you can change the background position again, for example, to the center of the image. And if you do that, now it will show the center, the very center of this background image. If you're not happy, then you can change it again and use, for example, right. And this time, the right side of this image will be shown or the left side of the image will be shown. So if you use the cover option, later you can position your background however you like. But actually in real world examples, you will probably have much more space to use your background images for web pages, not like 300 pixels, but maybe probably the full width of your web page. So let's change this, for example, to 100%. And if I do that, now this time, our image will take the full width of the available space. If you prefer, you can also add opacity to your backgrounds like this. And now your backgrounds will have some opacity. If you choose one, then it, is, it will be on the minimum and zero will make it completely invisible. Okay, now as you can see, there are a lot of different background properties that we can use but there is also a shorthand if you prefer to use which is the background property by itself the problem with this shorthand property is that all of these values here should be defined as the correct order so firstly comes actually the background colors the second one will be the background image as i defined here i just need to copy it to here the third one is the background repeat option which is no repeat. And finally, we have the position. Now, if I save this and if I clear this, I also need to put the size under of it. And now it does basically the same thing. But if you don't want to memorize the order, then you can basically use it like this. And finally, since I defined the width of our container as 100%, now, if I resize the page, as you can see, our background image also resizes itself. But if you prefer to make your background images being fully responsive and taking the full screen of your web page, then check out my other video as well.